Hey you fans of popular culture, today in the fourth series of vegan uh, meal preparation for the new era, I'm going to make uh, vegan New Mexico enchiladas. Okay, now what I'm going to start with is I'm going to start with four corn tortillas and I'm going to warm them up for a minute so that when, uh, when you take them out, they won't be uh, cold and they won't crack and they'll be nice and flexible okay i'm going to put it in the microwave behind me for uh, one minute and what you have here you have a uh, peanut oil you have it at about maybe uh, a uh, maybe a half an inch level and then what we have here is the red chili the new mexico red chili and i prefer to make it from uh, this brand this uh, chili powder and the way I do it is I get a bunch of these bags right here at any local Mexican uh, uh, market, which we're blessed with here in Southern California. You have places like Superior, you have Al Super, you have Vallarta, you have uh, Gonzalez, you have, uh, you have a John's Market chain here. And uh, so you have a lot of uh, myriad places to get all these cheap uh, inexpensive products plus California what would it be the uh, world seventh most gigantic economy in the world uh, we're, we're blessed with uh, a fantastic amount 365 days of the year of fresh fruit fresh vegetables at a very 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 low price and uh, so uh, okay so what I do is with the red chili I uh, I, I uh, mix the powder six parts in this case I use six uh, tablespoons of uh, chili powder and then I put I put that against two tablespoons of flour and in, in this case I used 18 parts of red chili powder to uh, six parts of uh, flour and I roast it for about 10 minutes I highly recommend to roast the chili powder and then mix it with hot water and then use a whisk so you don't get any lumps and but before I do even that I saute a lot of uh, garlic in olive oil so I have a perfect uh, a perfect mix a perfect uh, viscosity of the red chili that I want okay here we have uh, here we have the first corn tortilla now when you put it in the uh, peanut oil you want to wet it you don't want to fry it okay it's not quite hot enough yet uh, it should be sizzling but uh, okay there you go I didn't want to keep it on before I started filming and then that way it would be splashing and then but but I have the uh, both I have the red chili and I have the peanut oil at a very low uh, level okay so now what I do and I uh, highly recommend if you're gonna make New Mexico uh, enchiladas to get these uh, fish uh, spatulas are called and where I got them was Bed Bath & Beyond okay now you flip that into the uh, red chili there okay now you flip that over right there as you can see okay now here's the plate now when I say New Mexican enchiladas what I mean is New Mexico they make their enchiladas flat like so whereas if you go to Mexico you go to Texas you go to Arizona they they roll the enchiladas now the original term the original word in Nahuatl and Aztec uh, in uh, 1519 when Hernan Cortez got to Mexico uh, they were called in the Nahuatl language originally chili pizzali chili flutes and uh, the guy that was chronicling everything at that time he said that they would uh, dip the, the corn tortillas in red chili like this right here and then they fill it with uh with uh with uh the fish that the lake of mexico the valley of mexico with had a preponderance of 
and they roll them and hence the, the uh, name chili flutes or chili pizzoli in the waddle. Okay, here the second, New Mexico again, uh, we do the, uh, or rather when I, I will go visit family, this is the way I learn to make them. I prefer them this way. I think they're a lot tastier than rolling them. Okay, here's the second level. This is the second level. And uh, now in the dressing part, I have, I have a vegan cheese. I have a chopped green and, and white onion that I like. Uh, we also, in uh, the, my family, they put uh, black olives. And then at the end, when you dress it around the plate, you put, uh, in my situation, I'm going to put vegan sour cream. Here's that cheese I was talking about that I used before in, uh, when I was making the uh, vegan ta taco dorados. Okay, so uh, in New Mexico, they also, at the end of the dressing part, on top, they put uh, a, uh, an egg fried sunny side up. That's just the way the tradition is over there. It is fantastic. It really tastes really good. Okay, here you go. There you go. Very, very, uh, a very short inter interval, as it were. Okay, just make sure that you drip off the uh, hot peanut oil. And I highly recommend using uh, an iron skillet because you have the solidity it doesn't rock and uh, and God forbid you have a toddler they can reach up but with an iron skillet they can't topple it over and uh, also if it's a fact that if you use iron skillets uh, you get a lot of the iron out of the pot out of the skillet okay here's the fourth and final layer okay and uh this this way of enchilada is peculiar to new mexico the flat and if you ever go to new mexico especially southern new mexico i highly recommend going to a famous restaurant called la posta now i've gone up and down the rio grande valley and for whatever reason la posta is the only one uh that makes it this traditional way. I don't know why. Don't ask me why. You go to New Mexico. I guess it takes a lot of effort. And it takes a lot of. Uh, it just takes a lot of time to make it this way. And if you go. To set, set La Posta. They do put the egg. They make it traditional. And this place is in a, in a little village called Mesilla, New Mexico. It's about two miles south of Las Cruces proper. And if you know anything about American history of the Southwest, that was the uh, Confederate uh, capital of the Southwest during the Civil War for so a short time. So I highly recommend you stopping at that restaurant called La Posta. It was actually originally, it was a hotel in the 1870s and... Uh, Legend has it that Billy the Kid would stop there in the cantina and, and uh, pass out in the barn in the hay. And it was originally, uh, it was a, a stop on the, uh, the famous Butterfield Stagecoach line from 1857 to uh, 1861. And then when the Civil War came, they stopped uh, the, the Butterfield Stagecoach line. And then it was turned into the Corn Exchange Hotel. And uh, so I highly recommend you going to New Mexico, especially Southern New Mexico. Okay, now this last part, what, what, what we do in New Mexico, or rather my family, they put a coating of the cheese, in this case, vegan cheese. Then they put a ladle of the red chili on top. Now, if you were in a restaurant, You'd put this in the in a under a heat lamp. Let's say you have a party of six, all the enchiladas will stay warm. Now, in this case, after everything is said and done, I put it back 
after ladling a final uh, amount of red chili, I put it in the microwave for a minute to melt the cheese really fine. And so there is the first plate. And uh, so I highly recommend you try these uh, enchiladas for your family come this coming uh, Memorial Day weekend. And uh, I also want a little make a little interpolation that if you ever go to San Antonio, Texas, let me tell you, I highly, highly recommend. I know I'm a vegan. I don't, I haven't gone there for 20, 22 years, but if you ever go to uh, San Antonio, I got to recommend you go to this place called Mi Tierra. It has got to be the most fantastic uh, place for Southwestern, especially Tex-Mex type of cooking. And, uh, when I was a non-vegan, this place is very famous for their uh, this chicken and mole plate. Uh, mole is an Aztec sweet sauce. And I'm telling you, if you ever go to San Antonio, do not miss Mi Tierra. You got to go there. Okay, so let's go to the final product. And uh, okay, follow me. Let's go.